This lesson deals with solving an RC charging circuit. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7 starting on page 5. In our last lesson, we proposed an algorithm for analyzing circuits with a single capacitance, a switch, and linear components. Let's take a look at a specific example with a battery, a switch, and a series RNC. Let's want to solve for the voltage across the capacitance and the current through the resistance. As with my other analysis techniques, I like to do this in terms of an algorithm. This gives you a very formal procedure for solving a class of circuits. I propose six steps here. The first one is to formulate the equations that you're trying to solve. So we're solving for the capacitor voltage and the current through the resistance. But these are the forms of a first order differential equation, which is some a plus b times e to the minus t minus t zero over tau. Now I have two equations here, so I'm going to call the a and b here a1 and b1, and then a2 and b2. My time is t0 equal to 0, so I'm just going to have e to the minus t over tau. These equations have tau in common, but a1 and b1, a2 and b2 are the four constants I need to solve for. Now I want to graph these variables really for all time. So I need to know what's the value of the voltage across the capacitance and the current to the resistance just before we flip the switch. Time t equals t0 minus, in this case, just before 0. Let's draw what our circuit looks like. Well, the switch is open. And a capacitance that's been in a circuit for a long time looks like an open circuit. Again, we talked about this in chapter 6 and at the beginning of chapter 7. Because I is equal to C d v d t, you put a constant voltage in your circuit, and then eventually the capacitance will look like an open circuit. This current will go to zero because we don't have any changing in voltage. All right, so what's the voltage across here? Well, I've got two open circuits in this problem, and you really can't use a voltage divider to find the voltage across two open circuits. But we could use the fact that maybe we just built this circuit with a fresh capacitance and it didn't have an initial condition. We'll take a look at another example where that's not the case. So a fresh capacitor, uncharged, let's assume that there's zero volts across that. But later we'll be able to solve for this, again, using the idea that this is an open circuit if it's been sitting there for a long time. And then the current and the resistance, we really have two open circuits here, so definitely no current flowing. Step three is find the initial conditions. What this means now is the switch has changed state. So it went from an open to a short. We're going to assume that that happened instantaneously. And we're looking at just short of that event and just, just after it. So maybe within a femtosecond of when that occurred. The voltage across the capacitance was 0 volts at t equals 0 minus. And so it must still be the same value at 0 plus. It cannot jump instantaneously. If it does, you have to supply infinite current. And of course, that's going to be equal to A1 plus B1 times e to the 0. Now, what's the current in this resistance? Well, it's this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by 1k. So 12 minus 0 divided by 1k, 12 milliamps. And again, that's equal to a2 plus b2 times e to the 0. So I have one equation and two unknowns, one equation and two unknowns. Third is to look at when t approaches infinity. Again, the capacitance will look like an open circuit. And now we're going to analyze that circuit. And with the switch closed, I can solve for the voltage across this capacitance and the current through the resistance. Obviously, the current's going to be zero because I have an open circuit here. And that's going to be equal to A2 plus B2 times zero, e to the minus infinity. And the voltage across here, because the drop across here is going to be zero times 1K, so the rise in voltage here would be minus zero plus 12. 12 volts, and that's going to be my value of A1 plus B1 times e to the minus infinity, which is going to be multiplying B1 by zero. So now I've got the second equation in these two unknowns. We'll solve for that just shortly. The piece I need to know to finish my equation off is what's the Thevenin resistance seen by the capacitance. From our previous chapters, we're going to set all the independent sources equal to zero, and that's going to be short circuiting a voltage source, open circuiting a current source. If I had controlled sources in here, I have to put a test signal and measure the responding current, vice versa to put a current source and measure the voltage. But here I just got resistances. So let's look in this circuit to see a single resistance. So that's going to be my value of tau would be the 1k times the capacitance. Now what's the units on tau? Well, resistance is of course in ohms, but if you remember back, that was really volts per amp. And then in chapter six, we talked about the units for capacitance. That was amp seconds per volt. So the volts per amps and the amps per volts cancel and we get seconds. So the units on this product is actually in seconds. 1k times one micro, which is 10 to the minus three or one millisecond. Now we can find the solution. That's our step six. I know that A1 plus B1 is zero. Found that A1 was 12, so B1 is minus 12. So the voltage across the capacitance 
was zero before we flipped the switch, and after we flipped the switch, it now follows this equation, a1 plus b1 times e to the minus t over tau. If you evaluate this when t is equal to zero, you get 12 minus 12 or zero. So the voltage across the capacitance is continuous, can't jump from one value to another, and we're gonna use that for, our, for solving our problem. I mean, these are boundary conditions. Let's take a look at the current and the resistance. We found that A2 plus B2 was 12 milliamps. We found that A2 was zero. Therefore, B2 is 12 milliamps. So our equation then would be 12 E to the minus T over tau milliamps. When T was less than zero, we had zero current flowing because the switch was open. So we've seen an abrupt change in the current and the resistance. It went from zero to 12 milliamps instantaneously. So you can get very abrupt changes in currents in any element including a capacitance, but the voltage across the capacitance cannot change instantaneously. Now let's sketch these two equations. My, my current equation, we just said it started out at zero and then jumps to 12 milliamps and then that exponential eventually goes back to zero. But the capacitance, I started out at zero volts and eventually I'll get to 12 volts. So in sketching this, you can see that I got very close to 12 volts somewhere in this range of five milliseconds or later. Likewise here, I'm seeing that the current in the resistance is really very small after maybe five or more milliseconds. So you can figure out why that's the case. Now remember, my, my value of tau was one millisecond. So if I let t equal tau, then e to the minus t over tau is e to the minus tau over tau, which is minus one, and that's 0.3679. Two tau is 0 0.1353, 3, 0 0.0498, 4.0183, and five time constants, 0 0.0067. Didn't put this in your notation to show you that this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as we're taking steps of uh, one time constant. So in our capacitor equation, when T is equal to zero plus, we had zero volts and then we jumped from zero to 12 milliamps. At one time constant, the value would be 0 0.3679. That would give me a voltage of 7.572. My current equation, the value here would be 0.3679, and I'd be dropping from 12 milliamps to 4.4 milliamps. So here I'm going from zero to 7.572. Five time constants, the term that's multiplying the 12 is very small, and I have almost 12 volts there, 11.92. The current, I've really dropped from 12 milliamps to 0 0.08 milliamps. We do this as a percentage. So in one time constant, I've gone from zero volts to 7.572, and I'm within 37% of where I'm heading to. The current in the resistance started out at 12 milliamps, up to 4.4, and that's a percentage change of 63%. So at one time constant, we'll see percentages like this in every problem that we calculate. Now in five time constants, we're within 0.7% of 12 volts, and we've dropped 99.3% in five time constants for the current. So although we're talking about T approaching infinity, it's really what is infinity for the circuit itself, not for us. But as far as the circuit goes, when you look at five time constants, and again, this would be five milliseconds, it looks as if we'd approach infinity. So we're gonna use this as an approximation. Again, we're engineering students and have to cut through the math sometimes. We're gonna use this as an approximation. So five time constants will get me effectively the value of infinity. This is the algorithm and the interpretation of solving first order differential equations with just a single capacitance.